Should I hold the table? Should we? Is this like a trading places moment? I'll hold the table. <laughs> is there any props that you need? <laughs> Hey there, I'm Sola Awaley, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we're gonna take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. It's a little history, it's a little cooking, and it's a whole lot of me. What's not to love? In this episode, we're gonna make the secret power food of the samurai. Mochi. Yeah, you heard me right. I know we all know mochi ice cream, but mochi has been a staple Japanese food for millennia with many different fillings. We're gonna try and make a version of mochi that's as close as possible to what the samurai would have eaten. And then we're also gonna make daifuku, a red bean paste filled version that came around in the 1700s. So we're gonna jump through a couple of eras and we're gonna have a good time. So let's get started. So the most basic traditional mochi, the one that the samurais ate, was just made with mochi gama rice. That is it. So we're just gonna soak this, steam it, and pound it. That's it. That's all you need for mochi. Now for the daifuku, we're gonna fill that with a red bean paste called anko. So for that, we've got these azuki beans. We're gonna cook them until they're totally tender because we want a nice soft paste. And then we're gonna sweeten it up with a little bit of rock sugar. It's very fun to use. It's used in a lot of Chinese cooking. It's gonna be almost like equal parts rock sugar and beans, and you're gonna be like, whoa. It's a very simple recipe. This is gonna be all about the smashing the pounding, the technique. So our rice and beans have been soaked. I'm gonna get the rice to steam. So I've got a wok here, and I'm gonna set this bamboo steamer on top and line it with some cheesecloth. So if you haven't made a lot of rice or you've had some bad rice experiences, this is probably the easiest way to make rice because it's pretty much foolproof. You just soak the rice. Six hours is good. You can do it up to overnight. The longer you soak it, the softer the rice is gonna be. So for mochi, it's good to soak it overnight. We soaked this overnight, so it's gonna be easy for me to pound. But you soak it and then you steam. There's no measuring. There's no ratio to remember. And then you, you just have perfect rice every time. This is actually a Chinese style steaming basket. Back then they would have used square box style steamers that were stacked on top of a pot, but Nowadays, most people, even in Japan, use a wok like this because it's pretty convenient. It's really easy. It just sits right there. We're going to get that going, and that's going to go for about 30 to 45 minutes. We want to make sure the rice is really tender so it's easy to smash. Okay, now we're going to get our beans cooking. So these beans have been soaked as well, so it cooks for us a little bit faster. But just like with any bean, if you forgot to soak it, that's fine. It's just going to take longer to cook. Since these have been soaked, it's probably only gonna take one to two hours to cook. Beans, it really depends on how old or fresh they are. So I'm gonna cover this with water. And I'm just gonna let it simmer. And I'm just gonna come back to it. Every few minutes, see if it needs another splash water. We wanna let this cook until it's totally tender. We're not looking for an al dente bean. Very, very tender, but still intact. The main thing is don't let it go to like a rapid boil because that's when your beans can burst. I'm gonna like let that hang out. Next, I'm going to crush up some rock sugar. This is what they would have traditionally used to sweeten up the anko. Um, rock sugar is made from refined sugar, so it still is, it doesn't have flavor, like a molassesy flavor or anything like that, but it's just kind of fun to use. And I'm going to crush it up in this. This is a mocha hete. This is not a Japanese style mortar and pestle. This is the one we've got. There's actually a ton of different mortar and pestles all across the world with different names, slightly different shapes, but they all do the same thing. You smash something with something. So <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna do the job for us. So I'm gonna crush up this rock sugar. Um, we don't need it to be super fine. We're just breaking it up so it dissolves quickly in our uncle. Well, smash, smash. Today, the theme of this episode is smash. There's so much smash happening. Oh gosh. <laughs> so in feudal Japan, they would actually, farmers would eat mochi as like a snack. Oh, it's getting everywhere. So in feudal Japan, um, farmers would eat mochi as a snack in the fields. And samurai, it said that samurais would have mochi as a snack, like a pre-battle snack to fuel up on the sugar and the carbs. What, uh, there's a saying that 
You don't want to hear a snacking samurai? Like, that's bad news. That's when they're coming for you. But we, we didn't find any evidence for that, but it's a really fun story. I like it. But I think that there's no evidence for it because you wouldn't hear a samurai snacking on mochi. Like, mochi is the perfect battle food because it's quiet. Silent. You could probably, like, duck down in a corner, eat some mochi mid-battle. No one would even notice. And actually, samurais were also mostly pescatarian. They couldn't, they didn't have a lot of room to raise farm animals, but they had a lot of access to the sea. So people ate a lot of seafood, and they ate a lot of rice, and they pounded a lot of rice. Oh gosh. So my beans have cooked, they got totally tender. I drained and rinsed them, and now they're back in this pot. And now we're gonna add our rock sugar. So the beans have been drained, but there's enough moisture left in them that we will be able to melt the sugar. It's gonna kind of turn into a syrup right around the beans. We're not mashing the beans, but what happens is the sugar is gonna dissolve in the residual moisture from the beans, and then it's gonna kind of thicken up and have like a paste consistency, but we're still gonna have whole azuki beans in there. So you don't wanna be too aggressive. We're not getting, in, we're not like mashing. We're gonna just stir until that sugar is evenly melted. You wanna let it come to a simmer and then it's gonna get nice and thick and then we're gonna let this cool and it will become the filling for our daikuku. So that, I'm gonna just let that do its thing and we're gonna check on the rice. Let's take a peek. And look at that. It's perfect. The grains are nicely cooked. It's totally tender. Ooh, steamy. Smells really good. So now that's actually ready for us to smish, smash. I'm gonna just give our beans a little stir. We want it to take a minute to like come to a full simmer. So, I mean, I'm not being like too precious with it. You don't have to be like super careful, but just don't get in there and smash. You can, you can stir vigorously to make sure all that rock sugar dissolves. Now the Japanese people, they actually have a really spiritual relationship with rice because it is so important in their diet and culture. It's said that the spirit of rice is called inadama and it actually, they say it lives within the mochi. So the people who eat mochi, absorb that spirit and it revives you, energizes you. So it makes really good sense that the samurais would have this. So you can see this already, it went from looking like dry beans to dry beans with sugar to now dry beans in a syrup. And we're gonna let it simmer for a little bit and it'll thicken up into a paste. All right, so we got our rice. It's all steamed and tender. And now we're gonna pound it into mochi. So the first mochi I'm gonna make is, is the original, the mochi, no filling. We're just gonna pound our sticky rice. Whenever you're handling sticky rice, it's very sticky. So everything needs to be moistened. I'm gonna moisten my hands, I'm gonna moisten my tools. Whenever you're doing anything like this, just keep some cool water nearby. If things start to stick, just add a splash of water. It'll be okay. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit in this guy too, okay. So this is called an usu. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but um, you'll let me know in the comments if I messed it up. And it's the traditional thing for pounding our mochi in. And this is a kine, and this is what you, the, you, you hammer, you hammer the rice with that. So I've got my, I'm keeping my rice over the water because we want to make sure it stays warm. The second it cools off, it gets tough, it gets dry. You're never going to get a smooth and creamy mochi. So I'm going to keep it in here and work with a little bit at a time because I've got a little, a little guy right here. You can't take too much. Ooh, okay, see, nice and steamy. This water under here is hot. If I start to take too long, I can just pop it back over the stove, make sure it stays nice and warm. Because we're mashing it and we're going for a smooth consistency, you really can't like overcook the rice. So, wet hands, hot rice. Ooh, I'm gonna throw some in here. So I've never made mochi like this, like out of rice. I've always made it with rice flour, which you steam with water and then it's like, it's ready to go, it's smooth, it's ready for you to fill. So I'm really interested to see what this tastes like. I also have a feeling this is gonna be really hard. <laughs> It'll probably take a really long time, but we'll, uh, we'll get there. So I'm just doing a big handful of rice at a time because I've got this personal size usu and kine. But traditionally, you would use a big one and there'd be people taking turns hammering. I'm, I'm going at it solo and we smash and we smash and we fold and we knead. And we just keep going. And this is not an easy job because we want to pound until it's totally smooth. 
So I'm just getting in here and giving it a little flip. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to do a pound and flip and pound and flip. So actually, right before New Year's, the Japanese have a celebration called Mochisuki, where the whole family or even a whole community get together and they make mochi. Because this really is a communal activity. You're not like solo mochiing usually, because this is <laughs> a difficult job. So I'm just going <laughs> to try it my best here. It's getting a little sticky, so I'll moisten. This is a very difficult job. There, I'm gonna, I'm trying. I'm trying the best that I can. I'm all alone here. I mean, I get why the samurais were into this, because you get a little workout so you can train, you know? And then you get your snack. I'm really, I'm really giving it all I got. And I'm only smashing it up for like a bite of mochi here. Okay, I, I tried it in here. I actually kind of want to try it in here too. So here I've got a wooden bowl and this is the, the pestle from the mokehete I used earlier and I want to see how it is. It's a little tough in here just because it's so small. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna try it out. I'm gonna try it out, why the hell not? This is definitely not a traditional tool, but let's give it a shot. I'm gonna moisten this up, transfer my, my little ball of rice over and then Let's try it again, see if we can, because the goal is right now, it's smushed together, but you can see all the grains of rice. The goal is for all of those grains of rice to disappear. So we have a nice, smooth, creamy texture. Okay, I feel like I can get in here a little bit better. I'm gonna keep doing this. I mean, this was fun, but this is also really lightweight. I imagine that the big ones you see people using in the videos might be a little bit heavier. Here we go. Okay, now I see a little smashing happening. I actually think I can add more rice to this party because we're gonna make a couple types. A couple types of mochi. Hot rice, hot rice. Hot rice is easier to smush. Okay, all right, all right. So we're gonna make one mochi with no filling and it's just the pounded rice. And then the other mochi is gonna have this Anko paste. The mochi with anko paste is called daifuku, and it came around in like the 17th century, so it's like a modern mochi. Nowadays, people put anything in mochi. I've seen really pretty ones with like whole strawberries. This, this is gonna be a while. We're gonna be doing this all day. Okay, I see why this is a communal project. I think that maybe I need a rest. Will you be joining me? Are you here to tap me out? Well, Hand off, especially. <laughs> wow, so much rage. Also remember that there's a, there's a lot more after that. That's just batch one. You're doing great though. <laughs> you don't have to smash it in there. <laughs> Table? Should we? Is this like a trading places moment? I'll hold the table. <laughs> is there any props that you need? <laughs> okay, I should have stayed on this side. It's okay, it's just water. Okay, so GIF continued smashing away, and we've gotten pretty close. It's almost all smushed. We have a few grains, but I think that we did the best that we can. There was a casualty though, we did lose a bowl. Just he pounded with so much fury, the bowl came apart. Okay, so now I'm going to form my mochi. I'm gonna divide this into two and I'm gonna make, half of it's gonna have no filling for the traditional samurai mochi. And then half of it we're gonna fill with our anko for the daifuku. So now that we're smashed, we're gonna switch from wet to dry. Before we were moistening everything and now we're gonna lightly dust our hands and the surface with rice flour. So it just helps us with the portioning and help us with our stickage. Get, get generous with it, because so much, GIF put so much work into smashing this, you know, we can't lose it to the board. Okay, so sticky, so chewy. Sticky is good, sticky means chew. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really just get in there, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we wanna kind of roll this into a log and divide it into portions. 
when you make mochi at home with um, the mochiko flour, it's actually, it ends up like this after you steam it together. So you would, you would be doing kind of the same thing. We got a few lumps in there, but it's okay because we made it ourselves with our hands, you know? So I'm gonna try and smush this together and form a log and we'll see how many portions we can get. I like it when mochi is like two bites. I've seen bigger mochi, but I think it's kind of nice when it's nothing crazy. You don't want a huge mouthful. It's a, there's a lot of chew going on. So this is not super smooth, but we're gonna, we're gonna do what we can. You also want to do this right away, like gift smash. Gift smash. You roll. Like, don't pause between the smash and the roll because the mochi will start to dry out. So that's why we're controlling the drying by dusting it with flour now. Okay, I'm going to try and move quickly. Try. I'll try is the word. <laughs> okay, let's get some portions here. Dust in our flour. I'm gonna try to make it even. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm gonna quickly work with these portions before they dry out. And we're just like kind of forming it into a ball. <laughs> it's, there's still some lumps and there's still some clumps, but mochi is an art firm. It definitely takes a lot of work to learn how to make this. Can't learn it in one episode of ancient recipes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna smush, make our little mochi bites. Now I like even more appreciate when you see those really, really beautifully formed like mochis that are shaped like flowers or cherry blossoms because I'm struggling just to make a ball. So <laughs> I'm just gonna keep dusting in this rice flour. That's another lumpy ball. <laughs> Let's try and shove some uh, uncle into here. So this guy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dust this side, which is gonna, I'm gonna have that be my outside, right? I'm gonna smush here and then add a spoonful of our uncle paste in the middle. Now, I'm not gonna get too crazy. That's a little crazy. Let's do a smaller ball. This uncle paste is used in a lot of Japanese desserts. I really, really love it. One of my favorite things is actually um, Hawaiian shaved ice. They have these uncle beans cooked in a syrup at the bottom and it's like a really nice surprise. You know, you've got this ice on top, you got this ice cream and then boom, uncle beans, hello. Okay, I'm trying. <laughs> It came out, it came out the other side. <laughs> Let's try again, guys. Uh, it's uh, definitely harder than it looks, I'll tell you that. Okay, I'm gonna try and fill another one. This is definitely, this is something that I want to make more. I want to learn how to do this very well. I'm gonna start having little mochizukis of my own. Right now, it'll just be me and my husband and my dogs. Maybe I can get my dogs to pound the rice. Okay, let's try, let's go for another daifuku. Okay, I'm flattening it out. I'm gonna make my outer edges a little bit thinner than the inner so we can avoid that hole. And let's go for a little spoonful of the anko. And let's, let's see if I can seal this bad boy up, yeah? Okay, because it is so sticky, it's just like working with Play-Doh, it's just like, it just sticks together. This is, there's a slight improvement, I suppose. <laughs> there's still a little hole. Okay. This is a terrible looking mochi. Look at that. I'm gonna try again. I'm not giving up just yet. Okay, here we go. Another piece. We're gonna get one decent looking anko. I think I'm not gonna flatten the middle at all. I'm just gonna flatten the edges because that's the problem, my middle's getting too thin. This is gonna be the one, I can feel it. All right, we slowly bring up the sides, pinch, shove, shove those beans in there. It's like a little hot pocket. <laughs> okay, not a complete rupture. This is definitely an art form that takes a lot of practice, but it's, def it's a lot of fun and all you need is rice and beans and you can try this out too and something to smash, and someone to smash. The, look, they're, they're getting better. One, two, three, huh? These are the ugliest mochi I've ever seen. Please don't come after me in the comments, all right? These are my mochi. They are not beautiful, but I made them with my own hands. And now we're gonna taste. I'm gonna start by tasting the plain mochi. This is the one that the samurai would have eaten before battle.
Okay. There's a lot of chewing on this one. Even though it's not beautiful, and there's still a little few lumps of rice, it's actually pretty smooth and chewy on the inside. It came out a lot better than I thought. And I've only ever made mochi with mochi flour, and this is so worth the effort. You can really taste the aromatic rice, and I can really taste a lot of like the nuttiness from the steamer. The bamboo steamer actually imparted a lot of flavor, and it's a nice quiet snack, you know, when you're in battle. Let me try the daifuku. So th this is the mochi that's filled with the anko paste. I'm gonna get in there. I mean, this is a lot more fun because of the filling. We get nice sweetness from the beans. It's a really cool contrast of textures because you get the very, very chewy rice and the creamy soft beans. This feels like a little bit more indulgent. It feels more like dessert. But um, even though they're not pretty, I'm telling you, it actually tastes pretty good. Please believe me. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it tastes like mochi. It, there's a few little lumps here and there, but you can't even tell. The sweetness in the anko is just right. It looks like so much sugar when you're putting it in there, but there's no other sweetness. And you saw there's not actually that much of the anko paste in each one. So it's just the right amount of sweetness when you get in there. Overall, I learned a lot today. I definitely think I'm gonna try and make mochi some more at home because it's something I wanna learn more about. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to subscribe and hit us up in the comments if there's any vintage or ancient recipes you wanna see us try out. And I'll see you next time.